Ladies and gentlemen, the program will begin momentarily. As a courtesy to the presenters and audience, please turn off your mobile devices at this time. Thank you. Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm Won Sok Lee from Samsung. Um, I'm in charge of HTML5 feature implementation in Samsung, and um, I'm a leader of WCC activity in Samsung. So that's why I'm uh, here for introducing about HTML5 features on Tizen. Okay, uh, today I would like to present uh, about the brief introduction of HTML5 and the what is the Tizen web framework and the what is the new features on Tizen and the what kind of HTML5 5 feature will become uh, in the future. But I think that the most of guys already know about HTML5, so I want to skip a brief introduction and also, I want to skip the Tizen web framework because uh, another session already covered this. Okay, but yeah, I want to say like this: uh, a, a, the goal of HTML5 is not to make a document in the web. The goal is to make the web application. That's a big difference between the previous version of HTML, as you know, HTML uh, 4.01 and uh, 5. So that's why HTML5 has a lot of APIs and a lot of APIs and a lot of stuff um, for the style for. Uh, for supporting the application development. And there are a lot of markups are added, the more than uh, 20. A lot of APIs. And then Tizen Web Framework. I want to skip this. Probably you guys already take a look at uh, this kind of architecture. And then, and then there are a lot of steps uh, for web framework, like a W3C standard web API, supplementary API, and runtime, and ties device API, and UI framework. So, and then this is a slide also you already um, take a look at, right? So, HTML5 test.com, yeah, it's a really popular site for checking the inter interoperability of the browser. So Tizen has highest score in the world. OK, so I want to mostly focusing on this discussion, the what is the new HTML5 features on Tizen at the moment. So as you know, there are a lot of uh, HTML5 features, like uh, DOM and form and style and device API stops and graphics and media and communication and stories. And also, there are a lot of uh, the features like uh, security, UI, and performance optimization, and location. So if we want to take a look at uh, in detail of which kind of W3C, the standard API, are supported uh, in Tizen, then uh, I want to recommend you visit the developer.tizen.org. Um, there are some reference document for the standard APIs uh, for Tizen. So uh, please uh, visit and take a look at in detail things. So for Tizen 2.1, we add um, three more features about the media. So in case of Web Audio API, it's a really powerful API for handling the audios. In case as you guys know, HTML5 already has 
um, HTML5 audio tag and video tag for, for playback the medias. But that's only for the, uh, the playback. So that is not support um, accessing the PCM low data. And there are some restriction for the apply filtering features for sound signal. So that kind of stuff are covered by the Web Audio API. So the using this API, you can make uh, audio uh, production, the software. Um, so, and in case of uh, HTML5 video track element, as you know, uh, this is already adapted to the YouTube video. So you can uh, take a look at, when you take a look at the video, you can see uh, the subtitle of the video, right? That is, um, that is using uh, the video track element. So Tizen also support that now. And then how about HTML media capture? I want to um, explain uh, more detail about this. So in case of uh, HTML media capture, that is related with the input tag. So in case of the input tag, uh, that was in the previous version of uh, HTML, but there are no uh, capture attribute. So the spec of the HTML media capture just to define about the capture attribute. So what to happen when you use this is this. So do you can add, if you, if you add the capture attribute uh, to the input tag, then uh, when user uh, push the uh, uh, choose to file button, then a uh, um, native uh, camera application or native record applications uh, comes up. So the user can capture the media files like uh, um, uh, the picture or uh, um, video or audio recording. Um, and then the web application get the, the result of that. So web application can upload the media files to the service like uh, YouTube or Facebook, something. So it's, it's a really good feature for the web application. How about uh, APIs for devices? We add three items, like a battery status API, network information API, and screen orientation APIs. So in case of battery status API, we can get the, the battery information of devices. So it's really important uh, for the mobile devices, I think, because as you know, the one of the problem of uh, mobile devices is the battery life, right? So if the web application would be a, a in more intelligent web application, then uh, the web ap application have to use the battery API. So the one example is the uh, web-based email client. So as you know, email client have to check uh, the, the email um, from the email server. So how many emails are there? New emails are there in the server side, right? Then uh, how frequently uh, application will check that? That should be depends on the uh, battery status, right? So the battery is full, then uh, email client need to check more frequently. But in case of battery is low, then uh, um, the application don't need to check frequently because battery is low, right? And then another example is the web-based web uh, word processor. So if the battery is very low, then uh, probably application have to save our current content, right? So that's important. And then how can we use that? Then we can use uh, Navigator that battery object. And then there are some property like uh, battery that charging. So we can get the information uh, the whether this device is charging or not uh, with the battery that charging property. And then we have 
battery uh, charging time, it means that the how amount of time is required for full level of battery. And then we can also get the information about the how amount of time um, is uh, left, uh, is needed uh, for a battery go, go to the empty uh, with the battery that discharging time. And then we can get the uh, level information of the battery with the um, battery that level. And then the screen orientation API is quite important for a game application because typically the game application is working in the landscape mode. So uh, the web application, when the game application is, is launched, the application uh, should be uh, the fixed uh, with the landscape mode. So this screen orientation API provides two kinds of things, uh, like uh, the, the what is the current um, orientation, and then the another one is uh, the API for rock, uh, the, the display mode, the portrait or landscape mode. And then also there are some event uh, that, is, um, that is for the application now, uh, the change of the, the display mode. So there are the one example. So it, it, this example is just checking uh, the changing of the display mode. So the, we can use the, the orientation change event for that. So just to add just to write like a Windows that add event listener and then orientation change event, and then we just um, uh, call some function. The what kind of the logic will be executed when uh, orientation change event is happen. And then there are network information API in Tizen, so. It's really important, uh, important feature, I think, because uh, the one of good, good example of this is that um, it is the video streaming service. So this API provides the bandwidth information and then method uh, information that, that is for the, the uh, application would like to know this network is paid service or uh, the free service. So application, in case of video stream uh, application, they have to know uh, about the bandwidth, right? So in case of bandwidth high, then a high quality of stream service is available. But bandwidth is going down, then a probably uh, application requests the low resolution of the video contents, right? So it's important. And then there are a lot of use cases, uh, I think. So how can you use that? Um, so there's connection object. So in this example, um, just to get the, the bandwidth information with the connection that bandwidth, and then the, we can check uh, this is paid service or not with the connection that method property. So you can uh, use the fit uh, these kind of features like this. And then there are uh, UI features like a clipboard API and then HTML5, the drag and drop. In case of uh, clipboard API, the clipboard is the typically used um, when I when I use the um, when when we use the uh, um, uh, the smartphone, uh, we, we want to copy something from the one application to another, right? So the what is different existing um, the clipboard features uh, features in, in native the, with the web clipboard API is that the native, the, the web clipboard API can copy the original code of the uh, HTML, the including the CSS stubs. 
So that's, that's a big difference between that. So the what kind of use cases we can uh, think about is rich content editing, and another is the graphic also with the built-in semantics. So I mentioned about SVG. So as you guys know, the SVG is the, um, the graphic, um, graphic feature uh, with the markup. So the, we, can, we need to use the SVG markup for, for drawing something uh, in the web. OK, this is uh, just a simple example. So it's a really typical uh, cases. Just to choose some string, and then I just uh, I want to copy, choose the copy button. As you, as you guys know, the typically we, when we choose some string uh, in, on, the, uh, on the application, then uh, the context menu is, comes up, right? And then I just want to copy, and then I just um, indicate some area for paste, and then just to paste. We can paste that. So how can uh, we uh, call, um, make the call for that user cases? Uh, this is basic HTML files. And, uh, the we can, there are uh, three different events, like uh, cut and copy and paste. So the we can add some features of the, the cut event, uh, when cut event uh, happened, what kind of functions could be executed, like a cut handler and copy handler and paste handler. And then, in case of copy handler, um, just to um, get the string information, the using the get selection API, and then we can um, set the um, choose a string uh, with the, the set data method of the clipboard API. And then we can setting the types of contents, like uh, uh, text slash plain or text slash HTML or image, something like that. And then uh, in the paste, the, we can uh, use the get data uh, method. OK, in case of uh, HTML5 drag and drop, um, I think that you guys already use this uh, in the Gmail application. So uh, in case of Gmail application for attaching the file to the email, then you can drag and drop uh, the file, right? So that features are uh, implemented by the drag and drop API as well as um, the file API of, uh, of uh, HTML5. So it's a very typical. Um, uh, feature and then user experience. And for the HTML5 drag and drop, um, there are some JavaScript API uh, and some attribute, um, the draggable attribute for the element. So how can use that? Um, this is very simple user cases. So the we in the mobile phone. We can choose choose the um, draggable items. Uh, the left rectangle is the draggable item, so just to press that, and then context menu is comes up like a drag. And then when I uh, the push the drag, then uh, just the fist icon is there. Then uh, I just move the fist icon to the the drop zone. Then a uh, fist icon is changed like that. And then I can I can drop. So how can we implement and how can we use this? The first thing we need to add uh, the draggable attribute uh, for the drag uh, drag items. And then the, we can use the, a lot of uh, event like uh, drag start and drag drag enter drag over leave drag and drag end. And then we can 
we need to add some uh, functions for the each each of uh, event. So in case of what is the drag start, is that when I when I choose the uh, the drag of item, then a drag start event is happen, and then when I when I um, the drag the all the time drag event is happen, and then we can when I entered the drop zone, then a drag enter is happen, and then um, drag over is when I um, uh, when I go to the drop zone, and then that is over um, with the drop zone and drag item, then then drag over event has happened. And then in case of drop, when I dropped, and then all of the, this, the drag, um, all of the drag operation is finished, then uh, the drag and event has happened. Oh, sorry. And then we can make a logic like this. This is just for the logging. So just the drag start events is happen, then uh, just the, the log that the inner HTML is, uh, drag start is there. So just the drag, drag start, the string is the write up. And then for the performance and optimization, there are two features, request animation frame and uh, navigation timing. In case of navigation timing, that is just for the developer uh, to getting um, the performance information for application. Uh, the between the uh, when between the uh, I mean <clears throat> during the loading time, it means that uh, just the, the type the URL of the web app and then uh, just the, um, the browser starting to the loading. So from that time and the, the end of loading time, the, we want to uh, know which kind of performance are there and then what is about the bottleneck area. So the, using the uh, navigation timing API, you can, uh, the developer can get the information in, in that um, um, spread. In case of the uh, request animation frame, I want to explain more. So the typically, the, the making the animation uh, application, uh, developer the typ typically use the set timeout function or set interval uh, functions. But that is really bad uh, approach. So um, I mean that this is a very good uh, API, but this is a bad for, uh, for the graphic uh, processing. So, that's why uh, request animation frame is come up. So request animation frame is very simple. Just uh, the one API, and then the what what is different between the the previous APIs and uh, the request animation frame is that request animation frame uh, can make a synchronization uh, with the update of the content in browser, the with the uh, the frequency, display frequency of the device. So that's, um, that's the main point of this feature. And then how can we use that? Is that there are some animation method. So we can, we can uh, draw with the HTML5 canvas API, and then we just, uh, we just call like uh, the request animation frame. And then that called recursively, and then that, that will drawing the graphics uh, uh, synchronized with the um, display frequency of, uh, of the devices the, with the update of the browser. So it makes more smooth um, the animation. OK, that's all. And then the, what is the um, upcoming HTML5 features? Uh, for the media, there are a lot of discussion about uh, the media source extension and the encrypted media extension and WebRTC. So in case of media source extension, um, it's a really um, important feature for uh, media streaming because um, web application can control the, the media source. 
For example, in case of a stream, probably in the server side, there are, um, th there are a lot of uh, different streaming server. And then sometimes some server is closed down, or sometimes some server um, network is, is bad, right? So at the time, web application uh, need to change the uh, server the, with the another one. Then uh, the, we can use the media source extension API. And then in, ca in case of encrypted media extension, it's related with the DRM features. So, so far, uh, HTML5 video feature is quite popular and quite good. But one of the uh, issues is the DRM, because content pro provider want to um, copy protection for their contents. So there are a lot of discussion about this way is, is right way, the whether this way is right way or not. Uh, but um, probably last week, the first publication working draft uh, were published. Um, so Anyway, um, this will be, I, I just expect that this will be, uh, will be a standard in the future. And then I think that this is also very important uh, for content providers, so we have, to do, we have to implement that. And then there are some features for web RTC. This is for, um, for the video conferencing feature. So you can, um, if you want to uh, make a, the Skype application or a Hangout application uh, based on the pure web uh, technology, then uh, so we can use the web RTC. And then the we, um, more device API will become, like uh, ambient light event and then proximity event. And then in the security, the web cryptography API will become. So um, this API provides API for the hashing and encryption decryption and other basic uh, cryptography features. Uh, for the streets, quota management will API will become. So at the moment, there are a lot of uh, storage API, like a file API and web, web storage API and indexed DB API, but there are no quota management API so far. So that's why um, the quota management API will become. Okay, this is uh, all I have. So uh, thank you for coming. Any questions? Okay. Uh, you, uh, it would be a silly, quest, uh, silly question that I noticed that if I wrap the web page, it can. Uh, which HTML5 for, for video, it can easily to have a video player in the web browser with controls on it. So it is, it is similar to the camera, then when you use the camera and the capture fly, uh, tag, then you will get the control, default control for, to take a photo, to record a video. So it is uh, okay? Um, if you wanna, um I just this like this. Uh, do you wanna do you wanna um, the control the the stream uh, uh, from I, I camera? Mean like, uh, when I write a simple HTML file page with the tag for camera capture, so it will have the default control that take a photo, record a video. Right. So there are some API for that. That is can user media. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, you can capture. You can just uh, the use the video tag, mm -hmm. and then you can you need to use another one can use your media, and then you can get the stream uh, from camera or microphone, and then you can you can display the the video stream the with the um, the via the video tag. Mm -hmm. But the problem is at the moment the standard just to provide a. Uh, a few features like uh, there are no control of the zoom, and then there are no control of the resolution. So there are there are very basic um, feature is there. So I think that there are a lot of limitation if we want to control a lot of stuff like uh, uh, the using a lot of uh, features in the native camera 
uh, application. So that's why um, HTML media capture uh, feature is comes up. So it's different use cases between the can user media and HTML media capture. So when you use the uh, HTML media capture, you can use all of features of the native camera application because just the web application launch the native application. But in case of uh, uh, the HTML video capture, they could not provide the handling of the stream. So if we want to um, make application for face recognition mm -hmm. or barcode recognition, yeah. then uh, you cannot use the uh, HTML video capture. You have to use the can user media because can user media can get the stream. But in case of HTML media capture, it's just a native application is captured, and then just the app, web app is just a getting the result of that result file, saved file of the media. <coughs> oh, so that uh, is there an example runtime application to use the web camera? Um, sorry? I mean, that, uh, is there an example mm -hmm. uh, runtime application mm -hmm. to use the web API of camera that you can have yeah. more control? Sure. It's but but you cannot public? all of you cannot all of control uh, of the camera with the web API. In, when you use the runtime, runtime is just application instru yeah. installable web application, right? Yes. So for controlling the camera, you have to use the uh, the web API, yeah. like uh, can use your media. Mm -hmm. But as I said, the current standard just to provide a few features of camera. Mm -hmm. So you cannot use the all of features of camera at the moment. I uh, understand. So you mean there's an example application for camera, and it is the public intended dog? Yeah. OK, sure. thank you. I can try to find it. And uh, another question is, uh, is there a draft plan for the WebRTC support? Mm -hmm. For WebRTC support? Mm -hmm. Is there a draft schedule plan? Uh, we expect that uh, that will be that will be added um, in Tizen 3.0, the next Zero. version of Tizen. So you you mean that by end of this year, it should be supported, right? Yeah, probably. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question may be a little away from web, but for the full system. I saw that in the orientation, the portrait mode is the, the default mode. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think for the power intensive usage, for example, the web, the game, the video player, the camera, it is all used the landscape as the better mode or the default mode. So we have to do a rotation mm -hmm. to, uh, to fit the uh, default rotation of the window system. Mm -hmm. as, we see, as we know that our default window system of Tizen is also used the portrait mode. So why not use the landscape mode as the default mode for Windows system? Mm -hmm. Then we can avoid this mm -hmm. rotation for mm -hmm. this for the popular usage, mm -hmm. for the power power intensive usage. Mm -hmm. So that's complicated question for yes. me. <laughs> because that is not uh, that is not only uh, with the, the web API, I think. Mm -hmm. That is, that is um, the related with the, the, just the, the, the platform of devices, I think, including the native API okay. and all of stuff. I mm -hmm. understand. I just uh, want to, maybe at this point, maybe we can try to think about it in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, from my point, I think that uh, it used the portrait mode, it is, only the historical reason. Historical, we usually use the portrait mode for the phone. But uh, for current, for the smartphone, we, we do really use the landscape as the in most usage. Maybe we can change our window system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK, thank you. Thanks. OK, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, any questions? Seems not. 
Okay, thank you very much.